welcome to worship service this morning. If you are out there, come on in and join us. We're going to go ahead and get started this morning with Let the Praises Ring. So please stand and join us. You know, it's interesting, last week, I think I quizzed you guys. I said, you know, how many days after the resurrection did Jesus ascend into the heaven? And uh, I think we said 40 days, and uh, Pentecost is 50 days. You know, it's interesting, uh, you see something different. You see, we see red pyramids, which typically is Pentecost. And I'm thinking, it can't be Pentecost yet, right? We didn't get through that Easter service, uh, season that quickly. Uh, but we have red pyramids because today we're having confirmation Sunday. Uh, and we're going to have you two stand up. Uh, you guys are going to be picked on, not picked on, uh, highlighted, you know. But anyway, this is Lauren Rutz and this is Owen McGill. They're being confirmed today, so we're very excited. You can sit back down. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we got a lot of family members here. And so, so we have Red Paramounts in, in honor and in celebration of Confirmation Sunday and these two young Confirmands. Uh, the choir is here with us today, uh, kind of celebrating that as well. Uh, we're going to have a meal. If you don't know this already, uh, there's a meal immediately following. Uh, we're going to have a prayer at the end of the service, and that way when you go in there, we can just go ahead and start, start eating. But uh, there will be a meal following, ham, chicken, all the sides. Uh, so I hope everybody stays uh, and be a part of that, that celebration. And certainly uh, have a chance to uh, congratulate uh, Owen and, uh, and Lauren. One of the things that uh, they may not know, uh, but they will know soon, uh, is I haven't always done this, but occasionally I do. And, uh, and what I did uh, for today is my sermon is based on the verses they chose. 
Uh, she chose first uh, John chapter four. You chose uh, John chapter fifteen, and uh, no, I don't want to do a spoiler alert necessarily, but uh, you'll find out what those verses are later. Uh, but it's interesting as I read those verses and just how it applied so well to them and their life, uh, but for all of us. Uh, so, so anyway, that's my message is going to be based on uh, the, the lessons, the readings that they, they chose. So anyway, we have that going on. Uh, you were giving a ministry folder as you came in. Uh, please make note of a lot of things that are going on in our congregation. Uh, every Sunday, there's something going on in May. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Uh, the youth is having a, a chocolate-covered strawberries as a fundraiser. Uh, so if you haven't ordered your strawberries yet, please do so. This weekend really is the deadline because we need to, to order them uh, so that you have that available by next, next week. So, so anyway, you can still order your chocolate covered strawberries. Two weeks from now is May 19th. Uh, that's our regular scheduled voters meeting. And whenever we do that, we have a blended service, which means one worship service at 10 o'clock. Sunday school is at 9 o'clock, one worship at 10 o'clock. So if you come to the 1045 service, you'll be late, come 10 o'clock. Uh, to the blended service, and then afterwards there'll be a meal, and then the voters meeting. So that's on the 19th, so you got two weeks uh, to prepare for that. So 19th, uh, Vacation Bible Schools, talked about in the ministry folder. Uh, please make note of that, because that'll be coming before you know it. Um, right after the sermon was, is when we'll have the rite of confirmation. And so uh, if you do, did get a bulletin that is our worship service, there is a separate folder uh, that uh, is a little bit similar, a little bit different, uh, but that's it's just a, uh, a one-pager, which is the rite of confirmation. So I just kind of want to give you a heads up that if you don't have one, you may want to get one from the usher, uh, usher or read the one next to you, the person who has it next to you. Anyway, but we'll get to that when we get to the rite of confirmation, which is after the sermon. So that will be coming up. So, so anyway, a lot of things happening, exciting Sunday. Uh, as we lift up our praises, and it's kind of neat doing it a contemporary service. We hadn't done that uh, for a while. So, so anyway, uh, before we uh, sing Sweetly Broken, uh, which is kind of a nice hymn to sing as we think about confessing our sins, which we'll be doing in just a little bit, uh, this is a good opportunity to, to rise and to greet each other. I know if you're all bunched in, maybe just reach across the pew and shake someone's hand. But, but greet each other, share the peace of the Lord. Uh, so let us do that right now. God's peace. Peace, Lord. God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace, Lord. Be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Congratulations. Birth of a baby. Don't know the name yet, but you know you got a grandchild, right? That <laughs> Barbara's telling me that. Oh, you do have a name now. But she said it wasn't named yet. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you do have a name now. So. <laughs> I told her to write a card out, so hopefully you will. God's peace, man. God's peace. Peace the Lord. Great to have you with us. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Peace the Lord. You're her little sister. Was she a big sister? A good, a good big sister. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> hey, Cecil. God's peace. Yeah. Peace be with you. Peace, Lord. God's peace. God's peace. Greg, peace the Lord. Colin, God's peace. Peace, Lord. God's peace, Robert. Peace, Lord. Yeah, thank you. Remain standing now as we sing our next hymn of praise.
talking to Lutheran Church, uh, Reformation, uh, you know, Luther posting the 95 Thesis. You know, it's interesting, the very first thesis uh, out of the 95, uh, Luther wrote, every day in the life of a, of a believer should be one of penitence. You know, and we do in our worship take opportunity uh, every time we gather together uh, to repent of our sins, uh, to admit the fact that, that we are sinful. And I think it's good for us to do that, not that, you know, focusing on negative things, but it's a reality that we are sinful. Uh, but as we come and, and confess our sins, we also have the assurance of God's love and God's forgiveness. You know, we sang about, uh, you know, sweetly broken, holy surrendered. You know, we are broken, aware of our sinfulness, but as we surrender ourselves to God in faith, that we know in Christ we are forgiven. We're going to be singing this uh, next song called Surrender, uh, and this is going to be our, our song of confession. Uh, confessing the fact that we are unworthy, we are sinful, but following that, we will hear those sweet words of forgiveness that is found in Jesus. So let us sing this song.
talk about my message based on the, the readings that they chose is that Christ abides in us and we abide in him. The only way that we can surrender is Christ abiding in us. You know, the faith that's been given to us allows, uh, you know, that Christ has penetrated our heart and heart uh, to dwell within us. And as he dwells within us, that enables us in faith to be able to surrender ourselves to God. And so as we confess our sins, as we surrender ourselves to God, that he assures us that we are forgiven. That's why he went to the cross. He died for our sins. He rose again so that we have the promise of life everlasting. So in faith, as we confess our sins, rest assured that in Christ your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship now as we hear from the word of God. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from the ninth chapter of Acts. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them in, as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, Suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could, not, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles 
and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his, this name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from the fifth chapter of Revelation. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord.
out of respect for Jesus and what he has done for us, please stand for the, for the reading of our gospel lesson. The gospel is found in St. John's Gospel, the 21st chapter, beginning at verse 1. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciple followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the, the, the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the reading from the Gospel of St. John. Let us all confess our common confession of faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated with the children. Please come forward now for our children's message. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we today? Good. We hear a lot about the word love, don't we? I'm sure you've heard that word at least once in your life, right? Yeah? What do we know about love? Yeah, you give hugs when you love someone. You're truly passionate about them, yes. What else? What else do we know about love? How do you know if someone loves you? When they tell you? Oh, you are, sorry. When they kiss you, yeah. What else? There's lots of ways. When they hug you. Let me change the question a little bit. How do you show someone that you love them? You 
can pray for them. That's really good. You can tell them. Give them hugs and kisses. Yep. <laughs> Double whammy right there. What do you think? What do you do to show someone you love them? Give them hugs. Yeah. You let them know that you love them. Yeah. What about another one? Yeah. One thing that I do sometimes for people when I want to show them that I love them is I'll send them a card or I'll give them a gift of some kind, maybe a birthday gift or, I mean, Mother's Day is coming up, so I'll probably, I'll have to mail my gift to my mom because she lives really far away. But we can show love in so many ways, right? And you know that you're loved because people have shown you that you're loved, right? By telling you. And by giving you hugs and kisses and all sorts of things, right? Well, where do you think the love that you are shown by your parents or grandparents comes from? Their heart? Their heart? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. So... Your parents were probably shown love by their parents, who were probably shown love by their parents, who, do you get where I'm going? Love starts up here at the top, right? Someone has to show you love for you to show somebody else love, and then that person can show another person love. Well, that's what God does with us. He shows us all love so that we can all show others love. And we do that by caring for people, sending them nice cards or maybe presents or giving them hugs and just lots of different things, right? There's way more examples than what we mentioned up here, right? Well, I want to read you this verse from the Bible, and it's from the book of First John. And it says, No one has ever seen God. Have you ever seen God? No. You did. I've never actually seen him, but I've seen little bitty glimpses of him. Do you know how? I can see God by praying to him, but I can see God through other people. Because when you're kind to other people and when you're helping other people and showing them God's love, that's God working in you. So when God works in you, other people can see that. So that's how we can see God. But it also says, But if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. So because God loved us, he loved us so much that he sent us his son Jesus, who died on the cross for us, and then three days later, was raised from the dead back to life so that we could be, have life in heaven one day. Now that is pretty extreme love, right? That's the best love we'll ever know. But because of that love that's shown to us, we have that in our hearts. And we share that love with other people. And because of, we share the love of God, other people get to see that. Let's pray. Can you repeat after me? I, I, just for those of you who aren't sure how this is done, I'll say a few words and then I'll pause and then you can say those words after me, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me so much that you died on the cross and came back to life so that I could be forgiven of all my sins and have eternal life in heaven with you. Help me to always remember how much you love me so that I can share your love with other people. 
we pray that all people will get to see and experience your love through us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Like I said, I kind of had a spoiler alert to a certain extent at the very beginning of the service that, uh, you know, I got this title, Bearing Fruits of Love, uh, based on both of their readings. And we're going to look at, uh, well, first of all, uh, it's interesting that uh, many of us have been through junior confirmation, uh, similar to what they're going through right now. Uh, as, as a Lutheran that, uh, you know, we go through confirmation typically 7th and 8th grade. And I, I don't know about you, but for me, uh, my verse was chosen for me. Uh, the pastor chose the verse that uh, he thought kind of fit. Uh, and and I, I, I was one of, of uh, 32 people confirmed. It was a large church. Uh, so he came up with 32 different passages. Uh, I don't think there was any duplication, but, uh, but I had uh, uh, Matthew 6, Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, the verse chosen for me. But there are churches, you know, I've been in the congregation before that did this, and here at Messiah, that we allow them to choose their own verse, a verse that is exceptionally meaningful to them. And so they both did that. And so the very first verse we're going to see on our screen, uh, we're going to start with, uh, with, with Lauren. Uh, that uh, she chose 1 John 4, uh, verse 12. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. And then Owen chose his verse, John chapter 15, verse 5. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him... He will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, the next screen is going to put them side by side. Uh, well, one on top of the other. Uh, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us. And then I am the vine, you, you know, man remains in me. What, what, you know, I'm just comparing these two, and it's interesting that there's a phrase in each that's very similar. You know, the top phrase, if God lives in us, that Greek word that's used there, to live in us, it can be translated live, uh, dwell, remain, abide. Uh, many versions will have if, if God abides in us uh, and, 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 and his love is made complete in us, and, which is very similar, the same kind of thing as what we have in John chapter 15. If a man remains, abides, lives, dwells in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. So we have that commonality, and, and I'm, I don't think you guys called each other up, right? So what are you doing? What are you, you know, all, I don't think you coordinated this. Uh, this is just something that uh, uh, I like to say, God moments. Uh, we have those moments. But, uh, but yeah, we see a commonality, uh, which kind of led to the title that I had for the message, Bearing Fruits of Love. Uh, because, you know, John says, if, you, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And then the first passage kind of talks about that fruit that we bear. If God lives in us, remains in us, that his love is made complete. Uh, if we love one another, God's love will flow through us. And so, so we're going to be using those verses kind of as a springboard uh, to this idea of God remaining in us, we in him and bearing fruits of love. Uh, the next slide kind of says, God abides in us and, and, and we abide in him. It goes in that, in that order. The very first thing is God abiding in us. There's no way that we can abide in him unless he first abides, dwells, remains, lives uh, in us. Uh, that's where it begins. You know, there's churches that worship in different ways. And, and, uh, and, and for many, worship is an opportunity for us to come together to praise God, lift up our prayers and praises to him. 
And certainly that's understandable, and we have that aspect in worship, where we lift up our praises to God, lift up our prayers to God. But one of the things that we try to emphasize in worship is that, yes, that happens, but worship is more God coming to us than us coming to God. You know, we will refer to ourselves as a word and sacrament congregation because God comes into our lives through the word of God and through the sacraments. Last time we met in confirmation, I've said the same thing to my other confirmation classes. Uh, I may not have said it in this way, but I remember I used to always say, and, you, know, you know, Lauren, if I see you at, at Skyline Chile, you're sitting there with your family, and if I walk up to you and if I say, what are three ways God comes into your life? that, that I, I want you to know that answer. Uh, and, uh, and kind of, I would want all of us, you know, if God, you know, how does God come into your life? Uh, and we call that the means of grace. God comes into our lives through the word and sacraments. God comes through the word, comes through baptism, <coughs> comes through Holy Communion. And we call them means of grace because a mean is something tangible. Uh, through which God comes into our lives, through the written, spoken word, uh, through the waters of baptism. Today, we have communion, the bread and wine, that through those means, God comes into your life and he gives us grace. Grace being the forgiveness of our sins and the promise of life everlasting. So God abides in us. God comes into our lives, and that's where the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And as he lives in us, that's kind of where it begins, then we abide in him. But it starts with him. You know, he comes into our lives. And that's what, you know, we don't wake up one day and say, oh, I think I'm going to be a Christian today. You know, we're not able to do that because of our sinfulness without God first coming into us. And then when he comes into us, then we are able then to, to believe in him. We are in him. Which is interesting that, uh, that, yeah, he's in us, but we are in him. You know, scripture talks a lot about being clothed with Christ's righteousness. That we are basically covered with Christ. You know, he covers us with his blood. Yeah, we get forgiveness and eternal life. We are covered with Christ's righteousness. And that's an important concept we find in scripture. Because God our Father, because we're covered with Christ, when he looks at us, he doesn't see us as sinful creatures. He sees us clothed with Christ. You know, you heard the, the, the choir anthem in Christ alone, that Christ covers us. And so the good news is that as, as our Father now looks at us, he looks at us through the lens of Christ, because we are forgiven. We are clothed with him. We are connected to Christ, and as we are connected to Christ, we bear fruit. Now, I, I kind of mix up, mess up times when I talk about, uh, sometimes I say the fruits of the Spirit, uh, which technically it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's a singular fruit. You know, and I, like I said, sometimes I slip and I say fruits. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is, you know, in Galatians 5, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And the idea that it's a singular fruit is that because Christ dwells within us, we bear fruit. And when we bear fruit, that fruit displays itself in many different ways. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all of that flows through us as Christ is in us. We bear fruit. And part of that fruit, I mentioned nine of them, love, joy, peace, patience, but, you know, loving one another. Caring for each other. As God loves us, we love one another. That is kind of part of that idea of bearing fruit. Now, as I started studying the idea of bearing fruit, and Christ being the vine, we are the branches, I ran across this saying I found quite interesting, and I think it's an important concept to understand. But the next slide says, Nowhere in the Bible is success ever synonymous with fruit. Now let's think about this for a little bit because that's the concept that, it's like, well, what do you mean? You know, of course, we talk about bearing fruit. But I think the problem that we often run into is that we equate 
success with fruit. And, and to a certain extent, yeah, you can look at success as far as God accomplishing his will. But I, I, but I think oftentimes we have worldly understandings of success. Success based on numbers, uh, oftentimes it's quantitative. Uh, that's where you get some of this, these heretical uh, movements within the church. A um, couple of examples would be health and wealth theology. You know, the idea that if you have enough faith, you'll be healthy. If you have enough faith, you'll be wealthy. Uh, they associate health and wealth uh, with, with Christ being within us. And, and so conversely, that, and then that if you are physically struggling, well, you just don't have enough faith. And some would teach that. And some would even teach that, that financially, if you're struggling, well, you just do not have enough faith. And the more faith you have, then, then all these things will, will, will be given to you. That's a misunderstanding of Scripture because oftentimes we struggle physically, you know, struggle with various things in our lives. That's not an indication that God is not within you, that God is not dwelling within you. And even as a church, you know, it's easy for us to compare ourselves to others, uh, that there are churches out there that are growing by leaps and bounds. We're not growing as much. And so, therefore, it's easy to conclude that we are not as faithful. We are not bearing fruit like some of these other churches. Now, certainly, I'm not saying that we should not have self-evaluation, thinking about, okay, how can we do what we do better? Uh, we need to continue to seek to improve. But, once again, success is not synonymous with fruit. Bearing fruit is being faithful. That's where we need to begin. And if we're thinking about, okay, how we can grow and how we can do all those sorts of things, we need to begin not looking at it from a worldly standpoint, but understanding, okay, how can I be faithful? And maybe even more faithful than I am. How can I respond to what God abides in me? God has done us all this, all this for me. How can I then respond to that? By using what's been given to me to serve God by serving others. And so it, it, it starts with faithfulness. And certainly bearing fruit, you know, next slide mentions many different things, which all these is true. Bearing fruit is repentance, being Christ-like, praising God, contributing to those in need, doing good, leading others to Christ, holy conversation. You know, all of these things is part of this idea of bearing fruit. But the question we need to ask ourselves is, am I being faithful to all that God has given to me? Because God has given us different things, uh, different abilities, different strengths, uh, we think of stewardship, of time, treasures, and talents. God has given us all different things. And, uh, and one isn't more, you know, uh, have more faith than another person because one may have more abilities than another. That's not how it works. And God has given you whatever he has given to you. What we need to do is, is then, okay, how am I being faithful to what I've been given? And I think about that, and I think about these two people, Owen and Lauren, and, and it's just, I say, what great verses that you have chosen. You know, because they are being confirmed here, and what confirmation is, is that you're confirming vows that were made when you were baptized. You know, you made vows, and, and Owen actually remembers, he was that baptized a little older, not as an infant. Lauren was baptized as an infant. You know, but vows were made for both of them, that, that they were going to live their lives uh, serving God and serving others, uh, faithful in use of the Lord's Supper, uh, you know, all these things were vows made. They have an opportunity now, you know, many times people spoke on their behalf, and now they're speaking on their own behalf, confirming vows that were made. Now, we understand confirmation. People oftentimes joke that it's not graduation. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm finally done uh, as, a, as this Christian stuff. Uh, you know, it's like, no, this is really, it began at your baptism. It began... Uh, when you came to faith, uh, some through the waters of baptism, Owen came to faith before he was baptized, but it, it began at that point. And now, as they're confirming their vows, it's just, it's just getting going here. You know, it's just starting. You know, and they're going to live their lives, continue to live their lives, uh, being, as talked about in these readings, being faithful. 
understanding that God has, is abiding within them. And because of faith, they are in Christ. But now, how then can God use me as his child? How can I be faithful to all that God has done for, for me? How can I respond? And certainly love is part of that. Our love for others is evidence of Christ within us. Many places in Scripture it says we love because he first loved us. And then the final slide, wherever we go, Jesus goes with us. We go as his children uh, with Christ inside of us. And, and we're excited. I'm so glad we've got a lot of family here, got a lot of friends, congregational members. We are here to uh, celebrate with you. You know, as we celebrate with you, we also think about uh, our own uh, faithfulness and how together we can, uh, young and old alike, uh, live for Christ, serving him by serving others. We pray all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts, guard your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We're going to have the rite of confirmation uh, prior. I'm trying to look at my order of worship here. Um, we got the rite of confirmation. Uh, then we're going to collect our, our offering and continue on at that point in time. I'm going to, uh, we have our elder, John Heiler. He's going to be coming forward. Uh, Haley, she's been teaching with me uh, the rite of confirmation. So all three of us are going to come forward uh, and... If you guys have that sheet of paper, you come and stand, stand right in front of us, in front of the altar, uh, in front of your family, in front of your friends, uh, as we, at this point in time, uh, begin uh, with this rite of, of confirmation. Many of these things were said uh, during in the, the service of baptism that you both uh, underwent years ago. And so now you have an opportunity uh, to uh, confess yourself uh, uh, these, these vows that will be made. So we begin, first of all, uh, with this idea of baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included uh, that's commanded with God's word. Okay, and I hope all of, many of you have this right, so we respond together as a congregation. Therefore, Therefore go, go and make, and make disciples, disciples of all nations, nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching to obey everything I have commanded you. What benefit does baptism give? It works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. How can water do such great things? He saved he us through, through the washing of his rebirth and, and renewal by the Holy Spirit, Spirit whom he, he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, Christ our Savior, so that, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having hope of eternal life. What does such baptizing with water indicate? The old Adam in us lived by daily contrition and repentance. We drowned and died with all sins and evil desires that a new man should daily emerge and rise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. In holy baptism, we are forgiven our sins and granted a new life in Christ our Lord. We solemnly renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. We confess the gift of faith in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask you anew, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, yes I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, yes I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, and Lauren, do you intend to remain strong in your faith, committed to Christ's church to suffer anything, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do so in accordance with God's help. Do you hold all the books of the Bible written by the prophets and apostles to be the inspired word of God? Agree that the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the Bible, as you have learned to know them through Luther's small catechism, to be faithful and true? I do. Do you desire to be confirmed member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and a Messiah Lutheran Church? I do. Do you intend faithfully to live your life according to God's word, to be faithful in the use of God's word and sacraments, which are his means of grace, and in faith, word, and action, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to the end of your life. I do so intend by the grace of God. Give then your right hand a, a pledge of your promise and kneel to receive the blessing. We're going to do that with you one at a time. And so, um, you know, I looked and noticed on the very front of the bulletin, uh, alphabetically, Owen would be first, but I know he's such a gentleman. So we're going to have the lady young lady go first so Lauren I'm going to go ahead and actually have a mat here as well Thank you. a little bit easier on your knees and so Lauren we're going to begin with you why don't you go ahead and hand your bulletin over to Owen he'll hold it for you and give me your right hand as you kneel we have several things we're going to be given to you uh, and I'm going to read uh, this uh, part with both of our laying our hands upon you uh, Haley actually going to be reading the verses uh, that each of you shared. So, so we begin with the laying on the hands. Lauren Olivia Rutz, God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. Amen. Lauren, the verse you have chosen, which you already know, but again, is 1 John 4, verse 12. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Okay, go ahead and stand. We're going to hand you all of this. <laughs> and go ahead and step down there. And, and Owen, why don't you go ahead and hand those sheets over to Lauren. As you come forward, go ahead and kneel. Owen, Frederick, McGill, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. Amen. Owen, your verse that you chose is John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Why don't we all step down here? Why don't you come up and we're going to form a circle here and we're going to all have a prayer together. Let us pray. Father of all grace, creator of all that is, we give you thanks for making each of us the unique individuals that we are. We thank you for also, you also for calling us together to be a family. We celebrate your gifts and share your love. We pray that you will bless Lauren and Owen. We pray that in this confession they have made, strengthen them daily that they may continue to grow in the faith that you have given to them as they also use their gifts to celebrate life, sharing your love wherever you may lead them. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue our worship now with the gathering of our tithe and our thank offerings.
we come to, to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank and praise you that we can come and worship you this day, lifting up our prayers and our praises to you. But dear Lord, we do thank you for coming to us through the word and through the sacraments, giving us forgiveness, giving us the promise of life everlasting. We heard your word, we remember our baptisms, we uh, are able to partake in the Lord's Supper this day. And for Owen and Lauren, this will be the first time that they are celebrating the Lord's Supper. And dear Lord, we thank you for the faith you have given to them, the opportunity that they have to grow in that faith. Dear Lord, bless each and every one of us that we may serve you, Lord. Dear Lord, we pray on behalf of others. We think about all needing strength and healing. We certainly lift up all dealing with cancer and, and procedures and surgeries that's coming up this week. We think of Bob Ditz. We think of Alan Wingo. Dear Lord, bless them and, and their upcoming procedures and surgeries. Dear Lord, we pray for Joe Mashurda as he's dealing with cancer. We place all of these people in your hands. For Debbie Horner, who is uh, in the hospital uh, with kidney stones, and dear Lord, we pray that you'll bring healing to her and strength to her. Dear Lord, uh, all of these and others that may be on our hearts and minds, whatever the need may be, Lord, we pray that you will bless them and may they have the faith to know that you are with them. Dear Lord, we pray prayers of thanksgiving. We thank you for birthdays celebrated, anniversaries celebrated. We thank you for the gift of, of a child, Millie Rose Dagenhart, daughter of Ben and Chelsea Dagenhart, granddaughter of Chuck and Barb. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of life and the gift of this child. We pray that you will bless Millie and the family. Dear Lord, we thank you for the confirmation of Owen and Lauren. We pray that you will continue to bless them and their families. And dear Lord, bless all of us as we continue to grow in our faith and as we continue to share your love with others. Dear Lord, we pray for peace and unity for our country. We pray for persecuted Christians all over the world. Dear Lord, we pray for godly leaders, but may the voice of the church be heard in our communities, in our country, and throughout the world. Dear Lord, we pray that you'll be with all who are serving in the military, protect them and their families. And dear Lord, open our eyes individually and as a ministry here at Messiah. Open our eyes to opportunities to bring your love to others. Bless us as your servants, Lord. Uh, all of these prayers, we place them in your hand. We pray everything in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please stand now as we continue our worship service, praying together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
this is the body. This is the blood. Yeah, this is the body. This is the Please stand. And now may the true body and most precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen, preserve you in true faith to life everlasting, depart in his peace. Amen. In, in just a minute, I'll be doing the benediction, and then we have a closing hymn. Uh, I'm going to be processing out, and I'll have Owen and Lauren right next to me. So when you leave, certainly uh, you can send your greetings to them. But I hope you do that also uh, in the fellowship hall with the meal we're having together. And with that meal, uh, you know, when you go in, uh, really, you know, you can go ahead and start. We're going to have a table prayer here uh, just so we bless the food that we are to take. And even if you don't stay with us, we're blessing your food wherever you go. Uh, but please stay. Please stay. But anyway, let's have a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you once again uh, for this confirmation and this worship service. Uh, dear Lord, with the meal that we are going to be sharing uh, with the family and friends of, of Owen and Lauren. Dear Lord, we thank you for the food before us. Bless our bodies with it that we all may serve you, Lord, live our lives in service to you by serving one another. All these prayers we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now receive God's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to conclude by singing together praise Adonai. It's bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of
From the rising of the sun to the end of every day. the angels and the saints sing praise at an eye from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise at an eye all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints Thank you, Pastor, for the message today. Congratulations, Owen and Poppy. You guys are already out there, I think. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations. I want to uh, say um, thanks again to Haley for the children's message. Um, you know, somebody told me one time, they said, uh, you know, if uh, you're out and um, you meet somebody and they, they don't know church, they don't know God, they don't know Jesus, you might be the only Jesus that they ever meet. And if that's the case, what's he like? So uh, God bless you guys. Have a great week. See you next Sunday. Bye.